let's go back to, to Kernberger here for a minute. And maybe we could we could dive back into the idea of prolongation. Okay. And and so maybe what we could do is we could start with example twelve. Now, example twelve is quite interesting because Fogler has a scale fragment. So we have three staves. The very top is the harmonization. The the base, the first base stave is the basso continuo, and then below that we have FB for fundamental bass, um, and it's C major. Now I've added the circled Arabic numbers, which is common in Partimento scholarship now, and I've added the T for tonic. But uh, even though I've added these things, it's clear that Fogler, he didn't notate them, but he understood them as such. And so I'm just mm -hmm. adding things that are implicit in his, his treatise, and I'm making them explicit in the examples. Now, the bass ascends from one through five, and on each arrow, he has a passing tone in the bass that he then harmonizes. And so he has a pedal on the top, and he has the ascending bass, and then plus harmony, harmonizations of, of all of the bass notes. And he says here that uh, the, the fundamental bass doesn't change. It's just tonic. So this is a great example here of a tonic prolongation that goes all the way from one through five back to three, and all of the intermediary harmonies are dufke and accorda, so so passing chords. Okay. Uh, so this this gives you the concept that we're just prolonging the tonic over a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, okay. So and then he shows you he actually and then I, what I did is I I said okay well what if we remove the top voice and if you go to example thirteen. So here I've just I've just eliminated the annotate the annotational uh, fundamental bass layer and I've showed the top layer and I changed a couple notes from the pedal so the, the ones that are in parentheses that just neighbor and, and harmonize that note without keeping the pedal and actually what you have here is you have a, a segment of the rule of the octave yes and but with uh, what would what they what they would call a feigned cadence or what we, we would today understand as an abandoned cadence mm. um, and so this is a a, a a classic partimento thing and in the rule of the octave as as Giorgio Sanguinetti shows is in, in many sense it's an outgrowth of a simple cadence yeah. so and a, and a full harmonization so yeah yeah now Kernberger extends this so not only can we prolong the tonic we can prolong the dominant and example 14 shows a very similar idea again he's not using the word prolongation but the idea is the same and we have here the fundamental bass shows the note G. So this is, and he tells us this is a dominant harmony. And then at the very end, it resolves to the tonic. And so the intermediary chord built above six, uh, which I figured here is passing. And the dominant function maintains between the scale degree five and scale degree seven. Uh, these still maintain the dominant function as indicated by the fundamental bass. So these, uh, these I just yeah. wanted to to I'm I'm just you know it's interesting when I looked at Albrecht's Burgers uh, Thorough Bass, if I didn't have this extra layer of uh, fundamental bass analysis, it it's almost looks like it could be Italian. I mean, if it's it's just sure. they've add they've added something an extra layer of analysis to it. Um, but what what do you think about all this? Like for instance, um, is there like with the, like for instance, that that augmented six on the descending six scale degree and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. is that viewed as a different mutation from a different key, or is that are we starting to see that that's just, you know, it's common practice and we just do that on that scale degree and it's fine? Or what sort of analysis do you have on on situations like that where you, where you, I guess in the Partimento you would have seen it more as some kind of like pulling a pull from another key and and that sort of thing. Uh, do, mm -hmm. do we? How does that square with this idea of you know this? Now we're really looking at tonics and dominance and prolongations, and this is really just extra spice in the prolongation. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that exactly, and and I think uh, it would depend on on the con the musical context, I suppose, and whether we see it as part of a prolongation or uh, Fogler. Uh, we can go back to him has has a he introduces the augmented chords, French four three, the Italian, mm -hmm. and 
and he calls them cadences. And uh, his he's his cadence theory. We can look at it. It's, it's quite different than what we understand as cadences today. Um, but you know, in Beethoven's works, for example, we often see an augmented chord right before a five chord, and mm-hmm. and the augmented chord often accentuates the five, which marks a half cadence. And I, you know, maybe there's a study on it that I don't know. Of. Uh, I, I worked on analyzing all of Beethoven's sonata with with Bill. Kaplan, um, because he's he's doing a big all of them. Project. Yeah, ah, wow. Um, Is that available? Uh, it's so right. So they're working on it right now. Um, so I did a kind of a first pass through, if you will, and the plan, as I understand it, is to have an analysis of all of those sonatas available online, and that's a uh, one of Bill's work. So he has several people working with him on this. And, Time to bring uh, him back. I was. <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I, I was on, I was at the very beginning of that project, and I was tasked with kind of doing an initial pass through the sonatas. And then the goal was to discuss these sonatas and and if there's different interpretations for things, which there often mm-hmm. are, because Beethoven sometimes plays with functional ambiguity. Um, then those are interesting moments. But anyway, uh, one one thing I noticed is that the the half cadence when he marks the half cadence with a with a dominant harmony, he often precedes that with mm-hmm. an augmented sixth. Or with sharp four going up, and so there's kind of, mm. I, I think he, if if he's thinking like Fogler, which is uh, I, I don't know, um, but if he is, then he's understanding this as a cadence in a in a similar way to how Fogler introduces the concept of cadence. Mm. Okay, should we? Okay, um, we go back to Kernberger now. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So okay. So we went through prolongation, dominant. We did tonic prolongation. We did dominant prolongation. What's next? Yeah. So one point I make, uh, like if we look at example 16, example 16, I show uh, a a small excerpt from Beethoven's Opus 7 piano sonata in E flat major. And my point here is not to say that Beethoven opened his Kernberger when he wrote this. (laughs) That's not (laughs) all. Uh, He's not, I don't think he's doing that at this point. But my point is, is that we analyze this passage right here. We would say that the first part is a tonic prolongation and the second part is a dominant prolongation. And I think Beethoven would have understood that in exactly the way that we describe it. And I think that's my point. My point is that Beethoven is, is consciously aware of these things in much the same way that we are analyzing them. And, and so I'm personally very interested in, in uh, analytical music theoretical approaches that align well with how I think Beethoven thought. Mm. So that's that's my interest. Uh, and here you'll notice I have a slightly different notation. I have a, a TP, which is for passing, and then T6, yeah. um, meaning that it's a 1-6 chord. Now the 1-6 yeah. chord, even though it's still a tonic, it functions slightly different than the root position tonic. Uh, and Bill, in, in class, he, he likes to do this thing where the root position tonic you stand on two legs uh and the one six or the first inversion you stand on one leg and it, it's a little wobbly and you can fall over in towards the dominant and go towards the cadence or you can fall back to the root position tonic it's a little lighter feet. isn't it it's a little bit lighter than the root so, position tonic. And, and this is to speaking to the idea that while we still have this concept of prolongation and kind of harmonic function we still have the distinction between the chord built on scale degree three with a six three. So there's still the CPE Bach partimento uh, horizontal thinking, you know, kind of contrapuntal complexes. It, it's not just the harmonic functions theory, right? It's coupled here. It's all tied together in a way that's really hard to tease out. And so theoretically, we might tease it out and pull it apart and, and say, oh, no, I'll throw away the Roman normals, throw away the functions theory. Uh, I think we have to be careful, especially with Beethoven, not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. 